Hello everyone and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 where I'm going to take a look at the India Fox Teco F35 A, B and C. So it has all three versions. The A is the conventional takeoff version of the plane. The B, the short takeoff and vertical landing version. And then the C is the carrier version which the uh, compatibility with the catapults and the arrestor wires. So I'm gonna focus on the F-35B because I think it's the most interesting one with the vertical takeoff, and, uh, sorry, vertical landing, short takeoff, and we will see how well it does on sightseeing because after all, uh, well, if it can sort of not quite hover there, but once it depletes enough fuel, it can hover. Uh, maybe it'll be good for sightseeing in lieu of a helicopter, for instance. Uh, so, as far as the B version, we have a variety of liveries that uh, probably all look very similar because, um, I don't know, the F-35 I always envision as grey. I'm sure people are going to come up with liveries that are more inventive, available on flightsim.t or something. Uh, this is one of the planes where if you uh, type in certain masses into the stations, it will uh, give you those weapons. So there's going to be two versions. There's going to be a marketplace version, which will not be able to display weapons. And then this version that I got was on Sim Market, and this one does display the weapons. And I'll tell you, I paid uh, 30 bucks for it. Uh, it's 25 euro, and we will see how it goes. I've already tried it out because otherwise I wouldn't know how to do the the short takeoff and vertical landing stuff. Uh, well, I haven't tried the vertical landing, uh, so uh, if we do try that, that'll be interesting. But we will see. Uh, the B version does not have as much of a fuel load because short takeoff. So we will see how it does. Will it deplete fuel very rapidly or will we have some good fun out of it beforehand? Well, anyway, that's how it's configured. I've topped up all the fuel and we are taking off from LaGuardia because when I think of sightseeing, I think of Manhattan, so we'll take a look. Flying very, very slowly, hopefully. Now, I'm not generally a fan of glass cockpits because, well, they don't have as many parts apparently, but this is quite a complex one, let's face it. There's a lot going on here, and it's obviously custom. And in fact, uh, you can sort of toggle the views somewhat and there are views you can add, including a checklist view, swap main portal with this sub portal. Um, yeah, there's a whole list of views in the manual as far as what you can choose. But for now, we've already started up and I wanted it that way. So we're going to keep it that way. Uh, there's an alternate HUD there. There's an alternate HUD there. There is the HUD. So plenty of that. And uh, and most importantly, lots of information about our fuel status, which, <laughs> of course, in this game, because you can't actually fire the weapons, that is the main thing, because that's how you get around from place to place. Now, as far as the fun part, uh, you want to look at the hook slash STVOL, STOVL uh, button there. Outside right now, we are clean. We have all the vertical stuff activated, but once I press that button uh, in fact you could see the shadow while I was in the cockpit and we've got the fan there and that rent there so yep it's all going now okay well uh, let's see how it goes so I'm gonna release the parking I don't think we need to release the parking brake but I will I'm just gonna go Pull throttle here, and then lift up. There we go. And then got rid of use throttle. And retract. Okay, but we want to go slow now. And I'm gonna go back inside to see. Oop, not the best view for that. Yeah, there's a hover indicator there. You can see the STOVL mode and how much thrust we are using there and the angle I think the 52 is the angle the 73 is the thrust yeah as we reduce the thrust it increases the angle to keep us flying so I want to see where we need to keep it at 
about 50 because we're full up on fuel so we can't go full hover or full vertical um, we're going at 52 knots right now ground speed 38 only because of the wind taking a look at the panels while I hover around here there's not a whole lot <laughs> right because it's like a very automated thing in fact you can have an automated takeoff so yeah if you are squeamish about trying to take off and land with this manually there are options how to access those options well that's what the manual is for but I I am actually not that squeamish about it in fact I view it as the fun part up oh, it's got a little warning if we start descending too much but as you can see we're holding very nicely I think the warning is at negative uh, 200 feet per minute. So it's slewing around here. It's sort of helicoptery. <laughs> you can see the fuel depletion. We've got the left wing fuel. That's where it's drawing from right now on the refuel. This uh, fuel system right here. You can see the total 12.3. Uh, or 12,300 pounds and this is the view outside but yeah with the capability of going this slow at let's say your destination for sightseeing purposes but also the ability to go at a reasonable Mach number between points this can be a nice touring vessel uh, the only problem is it doesn't have much range uh, there are no external tanks Considering how much computer stuff there's likely to be on the plane, I think it's flying reasonably how I would expect it to fly. It's not like the Harrier. I've flown the Harrier in DCS World as well as in X-Plane 11. Uh, oddly enough, X-Plane 11 is a little bit harder sometimes, but uh, that is a lot harder to do with the Harrier and all. This, I would expect that everything is very automated and it feels that way but there's a lot of information that it gives you so that's good and it's still interesting and I don't know exactly how the dynamics of it are right now in other words I don't know exactly how it's calculating what's happening with the plane it's a uh, very interesting situation after all What, what little tricks are going on behind the scenes, if you will? Text-to-speech services unavailable. Uh, I hope that doesn't mean anything bad for our scenery situation. In other words, is it the whole online component that has a problem, or just that? Well, it's very easy to control, though. Okay, can we turn... H&M, hey! And we should check its other capabilities except for going slow. So, without further ado, let's uh, throttle up so that we get to a good speed to transition. That's a very choppy feel in here right now. It's a very halting sort of thing going on. I wonder why it's stuck at 75 knots there. Ground speed is going up. I don't think it's really at 75 if our ground speed is 190, right? Mm. Disengaging the short takeoff and landing. I think the airspeed there is broken because the true airspeed is 300 knots. <laughs> I mean, uh, ground speed 514. We're at Mach 0.82 already. So transition is not hard either. Uh, though it seems to have given the game a little bit of a hiccup. So we've very quickly climbed to 10,000 feet. I mean, it's not the most energetic climb ever, but we're keeping it off of Afterburner. It does have sort of an Afterburner flame, but it's sort of deep inside the engine. You can see that we have got a chunk of trim already. Despite our speed. 
Well, there's a condensation effect. So we are past Mach 1 there. So uh, Flying Bob Mach 1.1 down here. Still probably very sticky with the the transonic drag if the game is modeling that properly, which who knows. But we are off afterburners, so it can super cruise. I mean, fuel flow it says is 25,000 right now. But I put it up to max 62,000. So yeah, the afterburner does make a huge difference. And you can see the thrust going into red when it's on afterburner. So let's get some altitude. But the fact that maybe uh, there's an anti-ice thing on the indicator speed. If I can find that. No, I mean it says a ice there, so it must have anti-ice on. Hmm. And it would probably show zero if there was icing. And the true air speed wouldn't work either. Yep, I have no idea what is up with the indicator speed. Okay, we've climbed a reasonable height. Of course, we can't go past 44,000 feet, otherwise things go bad. But And you don't have to press a special button for afterburner. It's just moving the thrall forward. It still consumes a prodigious amount. Okay. So actually, uh, I said it uh, consumes less, but if I think the thrust percentage... Well, it's interesting the way that counts it. Because what used to be about 100% at, out, at this altitude ended up being lower. You can see the thrust actually going down there. And so in order to push it to 100%, I have to throttle up. Which is a valid interpretation of things. Okay, we are at 32,000. I'm going to go ahead and push it to... Now, my full throttle is 100% there. Before it was going past 100% into, I guess, dangerous territory. Now it's going into 103-ish. I'll keep it to, well, actually, uh, there's sort of a discontinuity there between the not afterburner and afterburner. So maximum fuel flow here is 45,000. So it does decrease the fuel flow rate at altitude, which it should. We're at Mach 1.53. And that with a little bit of a climb. I think it slightly overperforms the general idea of how well it can do. But then again, you know, it's uh, uh, very recent fighters, so maybe they're not completely disclosing its abilities. I don't know. We're in red territory on the thrust, though. There we go. 98. 98. So that's as close to 100 as I can get it. So, outside, it doesn't have any special sound as far as the sound barrier is concerned. In other words, it's not silent up front. Let's get bright inside there because of the afterburner. Uh, Mach 1.66 right now at 33,000 feet. And, well, we're not going to last too long like this. But we're going up the Hudson here. Maybe if we play our cards right, we can get to Boston. Well, it seems like our indicated airspeed has gotten unstuck. It's no longer at 75. So whatever the issue was, maybe maybe it was some sort of icing or something. I don't know. It takes a lot of trim. Considering the speed we're going at. That take, this takes a lot of trim. Normally if you're going this fast, you don't expect to be using half your up trim. 
it says 58% there, but my physical throttle is like at 85%. That's just by way of noting, not noting that there's any aberration. Well, we should probably cut the throttle and start descending here. Okay, coming in sharply. How about air brakes? Do we have air brakes? Oh, just the flaps, I guess. Interesting. Oh, the flaps in combination with the rudders, I see. Okay, more speed brake. look okay. It's not doing too badly. As far as rendering the scenery while this plane is flying at reasonable speeds. Now what speed should I go into the hoverish mode? It was able to transition pretty easily, so I think maybe if we uh, take off the, yeah, got the air brakes off, and I press the button, it's, uh, it's adjusting. It's pretty smart. We're slowing down. turning around because we passed downtown. It's not a big distance between New York and Boston, but then again, we, we went pretty fast, so. Okay, we're basically falling straight down, so. Yeah, the flight characteristics are very well assisted for the whole verticality thing. So, no problems transitioning. We do have sort of a sideways drift. There must be some strong wind there. Uh, I don't know, the ground speed doesn't seem like it. But uh, our forward velocity vector is off to the right. Okay, but I do feel like we need to go a little bit faster here. It's sort of helicopter rules here. You throttle up and tilt down. I don't know my geography of Boston very well, but I assume that's Fenway Park, right? Just cruising along. We can probably slow down and then get into a more stable altitude here. What? Is this side of the building supposed to be reflecting everything like that? Hmm. Well, the indicator speed is operating just fine now. Even though it's got lots of computerized stuff apparently going, uh, it is not overriding my trim, which is good. I, like, appreciate that. Well, let's try and land at Logan International. We've got plenty of fuel. We could spend a lot of time nearly hovering, ar hovering around, taking a look at things. Guess some flaps would be good. Oh, full 35 degrees of flaps. Uh, when I didn't have the hover mode active, it didn't let me go to 35 degrees of flaps. I think that might just be while hover mode is active. Or something. Okay, landing gear down. So that's the sound of landing gear deploying. I'm trying to slow down to see. I'm not using most of the throttle, so we should be able to get into a hover here.
in other planes, the yaw control gets really bad when you get into a hover. Well, I mean, I, I say other planes, I mean the Harrier. <laughs> so, you be careful with that. We're still sort of going 30 knots. Come on. I wonder if it can actually go slower than that in this case. That might be vertical enough, darn it. To be honest. I mean, the airspeed indicator to the left there isn't even indicating anything. It's got the true airspeed, though. And it's still got the nozzle tilted, so I can't go to zero velocity like that. It's at about a 63 degree angle. Oh, there's a plane there. Uh oh, uh oh. Uh, maybe we should go behind the plane. Okay, we better land here. Oh, we've landed. <laughs> it's pretty darn vertical, darn it. It's a little bit of forward momentum left. So, let's get out of the vertical situation. I'll take this taxiway, which is probably not the right taxiway. Uh, I can't turn. Okay, there we go. Definitely the wrong taxiway. Performs pretty much as expected. Uh, maybe slightly higher top speed than I was expecting. Fuel consumption is, well, again, as expected considering it guzzles fuel quite a lot and doesn't have much of a range. And it looks good. Really a lot easier to deal with than I thought it would be, which may be a downside because if you're looking for a challenge, I don't know. If you're looking for just a sort of casual fun. Uh, okay, uh, oh, uh, okay. Alright. So there you have it, India Fox Techos F35. I only tested the B version. The other two versions do have more internal fuel. So, they will have more range than this one. But, this is probably the one I would be flying most. So, anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.